hello everyone welcome to this video so in today's video we'll learn about how our home network is connected to the internet and internet service provider so i have drawn this diagram and i will dig deep into this diagram to explain you how things are connected uh let's uh, start with the leftmost section here you can see this is our home network this entire left section i'm, I'm describing as the devices and the network things uh, networking devices that are present in our home like uh, in top uh, you can see i have drawn a tv then there is a pc then there is a printer then there is a phone so all of these devices are connected to our wi-fi access point so that uh, i i think all of us are having one of these in our homes right now so previously before uh, wireless uh, we used to connect through LAN cables and uh, the the home routers that we are having in our home they have uh, the provision to connect through LAN cables as well so it's not only wireless the, through which you can connect to your devices so this wireless uh, access point switch uh, this is uh, directly connected to your internet service providers switch what is a switch which is a layer 2 device we'll discuss about switch uh, in later but uh, as of now think of uh, the switch as uh, think think it of like a edge device i mean the end devices like tv pc printer smartphone and all the uh, devices uh, that you can use as a consumer uh, those devices and on servers, PCs, these devices gets connected to, you know, directly to switch. So this this device that we call as a home router, this is also a form of switch. And uh, this is not a layer three device, this is a layer two device and uh, calling it as a router won't be appropriate. Uh, what, that's what I think because it, it entirely works on layer 2 because wireless LAN is also layer 2 and uh, Ethernet uh, LAN is also layer 2. So your router gets connected to internet service provider switch and this is a fiber optic cable or it can be a uh, normal LAN cable as well that you can uh, see normally everywhere. And uh, even if you don't use this home router, you can directly connect this cable to uh, connect to your PC and you will be able to access the internet. Obviously, you have to configure the IP configuration in your PC. After that, uh, you will be able to access the internet. So through this device, through this wireless access point, we are just uh, multiplexing the connection so that we can use multiple devices uh, in our home. So from this switch uh, this this is a big switch present at your local internet service providers office and uh, they bring the wire to your home and you connect that wire to your uh, wireless access point just like you all the other consumers they also get a similar wire from this uh, mother switch uh, from your local internet service service providers office uh, this is uh, uh, this way the entire uh, internet service provider in your local area is providing uh, service to all the other consumers just like you and beyond this switch so this switch just connects all of us to the ISP and uh, whom does the ISP connect to? that we need to know now so ISP doesn't have only these two devices. I have drawn one router and one switch. ISPs are having lots of lots of switches and lots of lots of routers and other servers as well like DNS server, DHCP server, firewalls, VPN servers. So and, and sometimes they contain uh, CDN servers. CDN is content delivery network like uh, whenever uh, you are watching Netflix or YouTube most of the time the videos that you stream comes uh, directly from your ISP's content delivery network servers not from YouTube server or Netflix's server so these ISP's partner with YouTube Netflix and all the uh, video on demand services so and they they agree that some of their videos will be stored uh, near to you so that you can access those videos in a faster way 
So ISPs uh, are having a huge infra infrastructure if you think about that. Uh, they, they are having these video servers, firewalls, routers, switches. There are lots of devices that the ISPs are having. So one of the, this is just uh, a small section that I'm describing. So this switch gets connected to a router. Uh, there are actually not only one router, there are lots of routers that one ISP is having. But and this cable that is used to connect the switch to router is also it can be a opt optical fiber or it can be a uh, LAN cable, local area net network cable. And uh, your router, you can you can imagine your router. Uh, actually, we can configure routers to act as DHCP servers. What is DHCP? If you uh, if you have watched my video about IP configuration, DHCP automatically provides your PC the I ip address subnet mask dns server address the default gateway address everything is provided by dhcp the moment you connect a local area network cable to your pc if dhcp is enabled then dhcp automatically pushes this configuration to your pc so these all these servers the dns server this is isp's local dns resolver so if this dns doesn't have record for the websites you are trying to reach to this uh, uh, DNS server will recursively try to resolve the IP address from uh, root name server, tilde name server, and authoritative name servers. And this is a firewall. Obviously, uh, all of the infrastructures are having a firewall uh, for security measurements. We will talk about security later. And actually, the IP that you are getting and the IP that your home devices are getting, these are all private IPs. So, what is the difference between private IP to, to uh, private IP and public IP? So to connect to any website or any service which is external, uh, you need to have one public IP to connect to one external service or website. So how do how you are able to access internet? You are having a private IP. If you check you what what IP address you have got, you will see that uh, it's not a uh, public IP it's a private IP how to identify whether you are having a public IP or private IP we'll discuss in IP addressing later but uh, as of now you can uh, say that uh, the private private IP start either with 10 or 172.16 or 182.168 so these three IP ranges are known as RFC 1918 IP addresses and these IP address ranges are used for uh, private IP addressing. So how this private IP addressing are converted to the public address before you access the internet, uh, that thing is called network address translation. And uh, we call it uh, as NATing also. And this NAT operation is performed just at the edge of your ISP. When, when the packets leave your internet service provider's network and it uh, tries to reach to further internet the private ips all the private ips gets converted to one single shared public ip so isps can have one or two or three in some cases four public ip addresses and uh, these are shared public ip addresses and uh, why are we using shared public ip address you can say that all of us, all the con consumers can be provided with a public IP. But uh, that's not the case because the number of public, uh, the number of total IP addresses possible is 2 to the power 32. That number is very limited. So uh, as per the standard standardization organizations, it has been mentioned that you can only use those RFC 19, uh, 1918 uh, ranges as the private IP ranges. and rest of the ranges can be used as uh, either reserved or public IP. So in my one, one of my previous videos, I have shown you what are the reserved uh, IP ranges and uh, what are the public IP ranges. So all of us have, in this home networks, these are us actually, all of us are having private IPs, separate private IPs. These private IPs can't reach to outside network unless it, it's converted into a public IP. So our ISP is having one or two public IPs. So while trying to reach to the outer network towards the internet, the, the IP address gets converted into the public IP. 
the source is no more our private IPs. The source becomes a public IP. That's the ISP's public IP. How all of these individual connections are tracked with with a shared IP, we'll discuss that later in uh, NATing. We'll we'll make a separate video about NAT later. So, what happens when the connection leaves the internet service provider? It reaches to further internet. So I have drawn a cloud here. You can see this is the whole internet. You can say like there are lots of millions of routers, millions of switches, and uh, those switches are connected to millions of servers like uh, YouTube server, Google.com server, Netflix server. These are all actual servers which serves the content. And uh, this cloud. So now let me explain what is internet. Internet is, internet is interconnected network. So this cloud consists of millions of networks what is a network network is just like you can imagine this this section our home network and along with the internet service provider and along with other homes just beside you it can form a network a network can be a office as well suppose one office is having one branch at uh, suppose one office is having one headquarter and 100 branches so it will connect its headquarter to those hundred branches through its own internet uh, internet infrastructure, the network infrastructure through routers and switches and all. So you can you can imagine that as a separate network. So just like one office network, there are millions of different companies and offices. So each are having its own network. All these networks are connected to internet service providers, and all these internet service providers are also connected to each other they are they are peered with each other in the, uh, all over the world all the internet isps actually uh, is connected with each and every other isp so this is what forms this cloud and this is how you access the internet and uh, how uh, your uh, requests and packets traverse to uh, traverse through this entire network We'll discuss that in later in uh, routing videos. But uh, for now, uh, I think uh, this is what explains how you are connected to Internet. So I thank you for watching this video. I have uh, I hope you have found this video useful to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.